I don't know if 55 minutes and 18 seconds is going to be long enough, but hopefully it will be. Um, so where do I start? I am 33 years old. I have three children. My oldest is about to be 15. Um, today's date is March 6th of 2022. And my youngest is six. Then I have another daughter who's ten. Um, this is my testimony. Okay. From the day I was born, the devil has tried to take me out repeatedly. I was born on Thanksgiving Day in 1988 on November 24th. Um, my mom was putting the turkey in the oven and her water broke, but she didn't realize that her water bag had been leaking for a while. So I was born almost almost as a stillborn. I came out dry and purple and the doctors had to work on me and give me lots of oxygen to get me to cry, to get me to breathe. Um, so I lived, obviously I'm here. Um, my mom was a stripper till the age of seven, I believe. And, um, my dad was a Vietnam veteran who was an alcoholic. My mom did drugs off and on when I was really little, as far as I know, only while she was a dancer. And my dad and her both at different times operated different, um, uh, construction businesses. My mom and dad both owned multiple houses in Southern California. Um, we always had lots of money, lots and lots of money. We had, everything was white and everything was brass or, or shiny looking like gold. We, as I grew up from the time I was little, children weren't allowed to sit on the couch. Um, only if we were in our nice dresses and, um, we could only have plain popcorn on the couch, butter popcorn, we'd have to sit on the floor. Um, that was when I was like five and six years old. Um, I remember we had lots of money. My mom would come home and throw money on the floor and we'd pretend to count it, me and my sister Samantha, before David was born. Um, my mom and dad had a domestic violence relationship. There was infidelity on both parts of the relationship and my dad being an alcoholic would abuse my mom. And uh, my mom was always seeking love and she was always seeking attention and she always wanted someone to love her and treat her right. Well, as a result of that, she brought home multiple men at different times. Um, I say multiple because it wasn't just one boyfriend. She had many, many boyfriends um, off and on. And uh, she would trade herself for money at times. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it. I didn't know it, but that's true. I mean, she did what she had to do. Um, when her and my dad uh, broke up, they stayed married for 26 years, but um, before they eventually got a divorce, but um, she raised me and my three younger siblings as a single parent. And when I was seven, I remember playing outside and feeling protected and feel the wind. I felt like 
like God was watching me or something. It was weird. Uh, my dad taught me how to pray when I was little. He taught me how to say my prayers and he made me promise that I would always say my prayers. He was a Christian and she was a Catholic. And, um, or she is a Catholic. She's still alive right now. But, you know, I don't know how long that'll last. Anyways, um, I had different people coming over all the time. As far as like church people, Pentecostals, um, Seventh-day Adventists. Um, we had, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would come over on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, never knew the Holy Spirit, not once, was it even brought up to me. Even though I, I heard my dad say something a couple times about receiving the Spirit, I didn't know what he meant. It was never explained. Um, my mom got injured when I was 14 and she was doing security because when her and my dad broke up, my mom started doing security and caregiving. She didn't really strip anymore. But, um, so she went on like many years doing security guard work and caregiving and one day she hurt her back after um, also being sexually assaulted. She flew off a bicycle and she hurt her back. That was difficult. She had to have a surgery on her neck. That was around the time I was 14. My mom one time brought home a guy and she slept with him on my bed. She left blood all over my mattress, didn't even clean it. I came home from school and I found that there. She laughed. And she said, ha, ha, ha. I was going to clean it. I haven't got a chance to. And she never did. She told me just to put a sheet over it. Um, that she would buy me a new bed or something. But that never happened. Anyways. Um, I started jumping off the window and running away from home. Um, the carpet was always wet at home. It would go squish, squash, squish, squash. So I would keep my boots on. Because my mom was always scrubbing the carpet. Because her little dog would pee on the carpet. So the carpet was always wet. We had um, no hot water. The showers were always cold. Um, we went from having a lot of money when I was really little. Into poverty really fast. And um, there's multiple times where we had no water or we had no electricity. Have no hot water. And she played it off and she, times I did call CPS for help. I didn't get the help that I needed. Um, the system failed me in that retrospect. I started experimenting with drugs at, the, at around the age of 14 methamphetamine, marijuana. Um, at 15, I tried crack. Maybe I was 16, I'm not sure. I think I was 15, though. Um, the first guy that... I went to his place at 15. He was, like, in his 20s. Some guy named Christopher... Anyways, he had planned on chopping me up and putting me in the dumpster outside of his apartment. But I played it off and I was like, really? I was hoping he'd say that. And I had a knife in my bra and I handed it to him. And I guess he liked that reaction I gave him. So I slept with him and um, I was permitted to leave, but I never saw him again after that. Um, as I got like further into drugs and stuff, I ended up in CPS. Um, I had slept with multiple people. I wasn't supposed to have children because I was told well, after I got the Depovera shot when it was in his trial that I would never have children again because 
the reaction it did to my body caused me not to have a period for almost two years. And I only got the shot one time. And so when I got pregnant with my daughter, Kiara, um, that same week I was planning on going and getting high. And I didn't because now it wasn't my life that was on the line. It was somebody else's that I was carrying. And I cried because I really wanted to do drugs. But I was also scared about being a parent. Um, I had already cheated death at this time by like so many different things like I had been in so many different vehicles so many different strange men and guys and um I can't tell you the number of men I've probably been intimate with in my entire life the Jezebel spirit the um me just wanting to be loved and cared for by men that same thing you know I was chasing men a lot and I had multiple men in my life at already at the age of 17 I, um I had already started to lose count of how many boyfriends or one night stands I've had, I had had um so at the age of 17 I found out I was pregnant I had Kiara at the age of 18 um she had the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck I bled out on the table um almost died I was Apparently high risk pregnancy same exact same thing for the other two kids um, blood out umbilical cords wrapped around their necks um, cheated death in multiple ways from drugs to actually better way of phrasing I didn't cheat death God saved me each and every time even though I didn't credit him for those times that he had saved me. Um, but. Like from. Gang activity. With the Brown Pride Mexican gang in. Southern California. And then my. One of my baby dads being a crip. Um, and then myself becoming a, a cripette. Yes, I'm white, and yes, I was in a black gang um, in Southern California, and it, the things I said and did to stay alive are unspeakable, and the things I had witnessed are unspeakable and the number of times I was almost killed so put in a trunk of a car to go be killed it's crazy it's completely crazy um I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder depression anxiety um wasn't until the age of 30 that I came across a video that was titled a message for you alone from God or a message from God for you alone something along those lines on YouTube that I learned who the Holy Spirit was and I was able to start making changes and it connected the dots for me like that hole in my heart that I was chasing that job that next relationship that car that next opportunity or I didn't feel complete that was um, sealed up by the Holy Spirit and I got saved I still struggle with sin I still struggle from time to time with um, anger and fear and anxiety God didn't promise that those things would never be present but he promised that he'll be with us and help get us through each and every single one of those times 
and that he'll never leave us or forsake us and that gives me hope gives me hope for a better future tomorrow isn't promised tonight's not promised the next five minutes aren't promised two minutes aren't promised anything can happen at any time raped at the age of 14. At the age of 21, no, 20, I was held captive for eight months in this man's apartment. It was a guy that I had met that my friend introduced me to that I thought he loved me. I thought he wanted to be with me. He kept me naked in his house and golf clubs at every door frame and beat me with a re really heavy like you say rotary phone only you didn't have to like turn the thing to have like the square buttons you can push but it was like big heavy house phone he beat me with that um put glass bottles inside me um, I wasn't allowed to wash my own body. I had to let him wash me in the shower. I wasn't permitted to wash myself. I wasn't as big as I am now. Um, my bones were starting to pop out from um, me not being like heavy. He made me park my baby, Kiara, in the corner of the bedroom while strapped inside the stroller and he had the music blaring and he went and let me get to her and I was crying and he screamed at her she's my mommy she's my mommy while he was drunk he was an alcoholic and um, he'd maybe make me wear his turtlenecks and long sleeve shirts and send me down the street to go get his alcohol um, at one point I had to send my baby to go stay with my um, uncle in Los Angeles because I was scared of what would happen to her, what would happen to me. Um, all my baby books and DVDs and clothes and stuff, which I didn't know that that stuff's not important, but I thought it was important. And I had left it all at his house. And my grandma was dying at the time, and my mom was in Washington, and there was no, um, Nobody there in her house, no electricity, and there was some crackheads that stayed there, and there's poop, dog poop, all over the house, and cockroaches, and I didn't know about domestic violence shelters, and I didn't know about, I thought CPS would just take my baby from me, and I would never see her again. And I didn't want that to happen, so I sent her to LA while my mom was gone, because I couldn't stay in that house with no electricity, with no food stamps. I had $6 left on my food stamp card and no money. Um, and I was scared and I poured my heart out and I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. Well, I went back to Tom's and I figured out a way to sneak out while he was drunk one night with all my clothes and stuff. And I went to a, a shelter, a Victory Outreach um, women's home, actually not a shelter, in Indio, and um, I received a message from God after like a week or two of being there, and I left. Um, I think I ended up back at Tom's house again, and then he continued to beat me and beat me and beat me, and by that time, my mom already had my daughter um, and was back in California. And my mom wouldn't believe me that I was getting hit. Because Tom would never let me leave the house with a mark or a bruise. He'd wait for it to heal in order for me to go see my daughter or for me to go home to my mom. Um, he'd say, you're not leaving with that mark on you. And I have to wait. And he would check it. And he would check it. And he would, because I had it bad over here. He would check it. I had different ones too. But um, once it was healed... He'd say, I could go and I better not tell anybody shit. 
and he let me go and I get to go see Kiara well, when she started calling my mom mom that really snapped for me and I really wanted to be her mom I really wanted to be a good mom I didn't want to have her raised by my mom um I kept telling my mom like please let me come home she kept telling me no that she didn't want me there that I wasn't allowed to be there I didn't even understand why I couldn't be there my old room was there But she didn't believe me and so I went back to Tom's again and he beat me up some more and my brother-in-law Alex saw me at a grocery store I think and I showed him because Tom was inside the store I showed him the bruises and the blood clots that were all over me and he called my mom and he called my ex-boyfriend Jay who's now Jenna's father and told them what had happened to me I again managed to sneak out with all my stuff only um, that next time I didn't come back I forgave Tom um, biblically speaking for what he did to me um, That's not the only traumatizing incident that happened to me. I mean, those beatings lasted eight months, almost every day. Minus 10 days he was sober, and when he got drunk that next night, it was really bad. Anyways, um, he, uh, there was other things, me being cheated on by Jenna's dad, and but I became an abuser because I guess that's how the cycle goes is the abuse becomes the abuser and I started treating men the way that men treated me I would sleep with them and I would cheat on them and I would use them because I wasn't important to anybody so why should anybody be important to me and, I, and there was a few there was a handful of guys who were really nice who would have been really good and today they're married and they have really good relationships and nice families and I hurt those people I hurt them because I didn't care because I knew they really didn't care about me because nobody ever had and um, three kids later you know the devil's still trying to take me out I've struggled with suicidal thoughts. I've struggled with depression and anxiety. But one thing that I know is true is that God loves me and I have a purpose and a calling to help other people. Um, I don't even know if this video can even be called a testimony. It might be just called a rambling of a person um, when I was 26 I hooked up with an old boyfriend and um, I had taken my kids to my mom's house for a couple nights so I could party you know have fun and I didn't come back for four months because I relapsed on methamphetamine and in that process I lost my job at the Hazelden Betty Ford Center um, as I quit because I thought they knew I was high and um, I lost two vehicles almost had my life taken multiple times oh my god I was shot at so many times but somebody took the bullets out the gun and I lived. Yeah. When they when they uh, emptied the clip, it was empty. Or the revolver. It was a revolver. There was no bullets in it. Um, but 
and I wasn't in the right spot of the house where they thought I was going to be at. Nobody would believe me that somebody was trying to kill me. It was really hard because I really wanted to feel safe and I, I wanted somebody to believe me. They just kept saying, I'm tripping on drugs, I'm tripping on drugs. I know what a gun is. I know what a drink is. I know what something physical is. You know, yes, I was on drugs, but I'm not... I'm not stupid. Like, I know this is a shirt. I know this is hair. Like, I know what a gun is. And I know that my life was in danger. But nobody would believe me until I showed up with, like, a cut on my arm or somebody, ironically, the person who took the bullets out of the gun and saved me was the same person who had cut me a week earlier. But, um, yeah. <sighs> I mean, there's just so much trauma and so much crap that I went through. And my biggest struggle today is keeping the house clean and staying on top of my schoolwork. I don't have men in my life that are involved with me relationship wise um I have brothers in Christ who help keep me in check and check on me um a few sisters in Christ that periodically check on me I don't really have any worldly friends I mean there's two two people that I know Two, two or three people that I know but we don't hang out we don't go anywhere together um, I usually minister to them over the phone we check on each other that way my heart feels 100% complete life I know I don't live in Southern California anymore. I live in South Texas and I'm by the water and I fight hurricanes every summer, spring, and I go to church every Sunday with the girls. Life's not peaches and cream, you know, life's a struggle and that's probably not going to change. I don't think it's meant to. When they say struggle is real, yeah, it's real. That's just acknowledgement of it. But God is bigger than any of my struggles and any of my fears or anxieties. And it helps me to know that I'm not alone. And that even though things happen I'm still in a better place than I was yesterday or the day before or the year before I weigh a lot I'm like 400 pounds I think um, so a lot of traumas I still have a lot of heart issues, spiritually speaking. Um, I'm working through those. I was a drug addict. A not good woman to men an abuser oh yeah guess what else uh, I'm sorry I have ADHD so I'll go back and forth from topics so hopefully you have ADHD too and you can just completely catch up or not be fall behind in my conversation I think you're probably okay anyways um, I just remembered like when I was talking about the three kids I had um, 
and I wasn't supposed to get pregnant. I was told I'd never have children. So I had Kiara. And then um, I had the Marina IUD after that. Which, um, when I had that removed, I didn't really think I needed it. Um, three and a half years later, because I was also convinced I was not going to get pregnant again. And I had actually been praying for a baby for two and a half years. But there was still part of me that didn't think it was going to happen at all because I wasn't even supposed to have Kiara. Well, I got pregnant with Jen and Eve. I was like, okay, wow, two babies. I have two babies, you know. And uh, each one of them contributed to saving me. Had I not had Kiara, I would have continued doing drugs at the age of 17. Um, I was so depressed when Jen and Eve's dad broke up with me that to find out I was pregnant a few weeks before the breakup, to know I'd still have her and that I had the baby i have been praying for, um, was a miracle. And that really contributed to helping to save me. And then when I was 26 and I fell off the wagon... Um, I found out I was pregnant with Elizabeth and that's when I was with that guy Michael and we we're partying and I got involved in like more drugs and gangs and stuff and almost got killed so much several times. Well, I ended up in rehab. I prayed to God and two days later I was in rehab with my two kids. 45 days later I graduated with 13 certificates and then went back to staying with my mom. Then I wrote a letter to President Barack Obama on my daughter's birthday explaining my whole situation to him that um, I needed childcare and I wanted to go to school, but I couldn't go to school or go to job because I can't trust crackheads to watch my kids. I can't even afford a roof over my head. I've been on the Section 8 waiting list for over 10 years. And I like wrote this really long thing explaining everything to him and my hopes and my dreams. Five days later, I got selected for the Section 8 um, Voucher Choice Program, and I got my Section 8. One year later, I moved to Texas, and a year and a half after that, I got saved. And um, it was all God's plan, you know. I feel like looking back that I was dragged by a semi truck through a lot of rough terrain and I have like so many different life experiences in so many different areas it's scary I get really stressed out when the house isn't cleaned um but I've already been jibber jabbering for like 33 minutes and 34 seconds so um probably gonna cut this short flew off the deep end and started yelling at the kids today about the house not being cleaned I mean I walked out and I was tripping over bags of trash I was tripping over toys I was tripping over pillows and all I wanted to do was get up and make a cup of coffee. But if that's the worst thing I got going on right now, then I need to check my pride and be grateful for what God has given me. And it's really hard for me at times because it's not that I don't know where I came from. It's not that I don't appreciate and love the family and the kids and the life God has given me it's just the the devil will attack you and make you question everything and your pride will get in the way and mess things up so I'm gonna go home I'm gonna apologize to the girls and I'm gonna get ready for church and I hope you all have a blessed day and stay safe and um, I think right now you know, we got like some World War Three stuff popping off. But we went through the pandemic and 
It's just crazy. Lots and lots of crazy stuff. I think I'll probably make some more of these rambling videos. I feel better now that I've talking to all of you. Even though technically I'm talking to my camera. Anyways, you guys have a blessed day. Stay safe and I'm out. Bye.